All right. So I have quite an interesting guest in the house. All right. It's great to have you back. We're not taking the news now. We have uh, someone who's interesting enough to talk to. Now, he's Jonathan Ogoji, popularly known as Jonathan Kome, a man truly passionate about worship. And uh, he will be performing later for us. But just before that, let's get to catch up with him and what he's all about. It's great to have you, Kume. You Thank are, you very much. Thank you're you based much. in Kenya, by yes, the way. Yes, Kenya. How many times have you been in Nigeria? Um, okay, so uh, I'm Nigerian anyway. Um, okay. at, at some point in my life, I was based in the UK. Okay. So I was there for like six years. Okay. And then moved over to, came back to Nigeria. Okay. Then I was, by God's mercy, privileged to begin to touch the African countries, South Africa and Kenya. For some mm. reason, got to Kenya and um, COVID happened. And then oh, things started wow. taking form from there. I got to realize that, okay, yes, it was not a good season, but also it was a season for, of definition for me. Okay. And that's when things became clear to me um, why I was there. And from there, it kicked up for me. Um, while I was in Nigeria, I, I, used to, I used to be a drummer. I used to play okay. for... I was one who played for Infinity, Olorio Ko, hmm. Lara George, Eben, and then way back Resonance. Oh, yes, yeah, Serena. You are, you are, you are, yeah. you are, you are a treasure. <laughs> You've been we, in ma very we, major hits. We thank God. You we know. think he's been, um, he's been merciful, and uh, I thank God. You drum in all those projects. Yes, I play drums and a few imputes. Oh, okay. God. How, how long are you still drumming? Yes, I still play the drums. I, I even have a new skill added to it. I play the guitar also. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we're still up in the game. You're up in the game. Yeah, singing, okay, but yeah. when did you start singing as an artist, as an individual or an artist yourself? As an individual artist, um, let's say seven years ago. Okay. Seven years ago. And then when, when was the, that time when you really got into it and said, okay, this is what I will be doing? Was it, was it at that same time? At the, at the point I was playing drums, I was full-time in it. I started playing drums okay. at the age of seven. Okay. I went into professional music at the age of... 15. Okay. Yeah, and from there it was all about music, gospel basically, but gospel. I was never, um, I, I think for my love for God, I never explored secular music. What is, what, what, what is gospel music? Okay, so gospel for me is the message of truth, which is Christ, what I understand Christ to be and what I have committed myself to do for him in terms of, okay, you are the giver of what I have. Let me use what you've given to me to enhance the kingdom, mm. your kingdom. So okay. m when I say gospel, I, I basically mean Yeshua's message, Christ, Jesus Christ. Christ, Jesus, that message. Now, yes. a number of people will tell you that um, what a number of artists do is church music is different from gospel music. Why do I say so? Or why do they say so? They say gospel is meant to reach out to, get to, in quote, the people that you want to reach out to yeah. and you want to get them. Yeah. So it shouldn't, it's different from what you play to the people who are already in the fold. Per se. I don't yeah. know if you get where, yeah. um, what, what, what exactly what yeah. I'm saying. What do you think about that line of thought? I, I kind of have my reservations for that because for me, I believe that the message is not true. It's not two, sorry. Okay. It's one, okay. which is Christ, okay. the author and the finisher of, of a faith. All right. So I shouldn't have a message for you who is in Christ and have a message differently for the one who is out there because when you, when you found Christ, there was no special message given to you. It was the okay. same message which was Christ is Lord. Mm. So the most important, what I would say is when you find yourself in the four walls of the church, one thing should govern the worship there, which is his spirit. So if, for example, if we're in church and his spirit directs us to pop, we do pop. If his spirit directs us to just pads and strings, we do what that. What if in a case where that particular music that edifies those yeah. in the church yeah. might, not, might, might, might not be accepted by those outside that you're trying to get into the church. Yeah, so that's what I, that, that's why for me, that's something that I normally do. I allow his spirit direct me. Okay. So it's like, um, what do you call, you know this, um, the tray, the makeup artist has, that has different. The so I, and all I allow that. my life be like that before God mm. and then wherever he would have me go, I allow him choose what he wants. Because at the end of the day, the truth is, no matter how much you think the street has its sound and the church has its sound, the mm. true person who knows is the person who sees her head. And the person who sees her head for me is the Holy Spirit and it's Christ. So if I'm going to meet a bus conductor, for example, God might tell me, I need you to bring out your pigeon. And I bring it out. Not me trying to understand. Because sometimes you see a bus conductor, but you never know that he doesn't speak pigeon. Mm. Because you just have an idea because you think he's in the streets. Meanwhile, the author finisher knows the beginning, knows the end. 
So why don't you allow him direct you on how you deal with him? Now, this video is something a number of people saw it and they liked it. It has a street vibe. Yeah. It has that, for me, that, that's why I was bringing up the, it yeah. has the outreach vibe. Yes. It has that vibe of, hey, let, let's get out there and get people in, which is why I brought yes. up that question. You know, somebody inside might, without hearing the words, might sit and say, oh, what kind of video oh, yeah. is this? Yes. I don't know if you get where exactly. I'm coming from yes. and all of that. So how, what was your thought process in putting this video okay, together? So there was a burden on my heart when I was in Nairobi, Kenya. I got to okay. realize that a lot of the youths had gone a certain way. Mm. And I found myself praying more for them. You, okay. find, you find a child from the age of 16, 14, okay. there's this thing they chew, it's, it's like grass, it's called okay. mira. So okay. you chew it and you get high on it and mm. it's easily gotten anywhere. And you have young people into it. And then I was sleeping, I went for prayers, and I woke up one morning. I'm honestly, as I went for a vigil, I just hey, hey, myself, you be God, you know, that's the, this is the first pigeon song I've ever written. Okay. And now I did not write it from, like, I need to get to the streets. No. It was, it just came to me. It just came to you. Do this song. I was like, okay. okay. And I tried it. It's new to me. But it's yeah. one thing I've learned is in the work of faith, do not be scared to jump in a pool filled with sharks as long as Christ is leading you. Right, you jump. Wonderful. So that's what I did with this song. And voila, came out and um, we got a lot of feedback from people who had kids who had reached out to me saying they really want to know Jesus Great more. Video. So Great basically video. for me, I thank God that finally the talent, the gift God has given us is giving us a very good platform to platform. evangelize. All right, come here. Well done. We'll just take a break and when we come back, we'll see how you fare in the shack pool. With that performance, right? Thank you very much. All right, we'll take this break now.